What kind of society do you want? Do you want a society where everyone is allowed to be who they are, so to speak, and to be successful at that? Or do you want a society that does everything it can to make people the same, regardless of their individual, you know, of the individual differences that are intrinsic to them? It is by, by no means obvious that that's what you want. So, you'd have to do some pretty wicked social engineering to eradicate these differences, and it looks like the social engineering that you'd have to do would run counter to egalitarianism. Right? Because since egalitarianism seems to heighten the differences, it only makes sense that you'd have to run counter to egalitarianism to reduce them. So, the LIPA study here, where, where there's an association between the UN indices of gender equality and gender differences in agreeableness, I think that was 500,000 people. So, the, you know, the net has made, uh, the internet has made it possible to run huge samples. Now, here's some interesting things, too. Um, the, the occupational preferences between men and women are actually a lot larger than the, than the personality differences. And the occupational differences are large. And, not, and like the gender differences in personality, the occupational preference differences increase as you move towards more egalitarian societies. So, the big difference between women and men seems to be that women prefer working with people and men prefer working with things. Now, this is an interesting way to look at it because for a long time, you know, if you're thinking about sexist stereotypes, say up to the 1950s, maybe a little later than that, maybe up to the mid 60s or so, um, the idea would have been that whatever gender differences there were in, in occupational. Uh, uh, skill in, 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 in occupational distribution would have had more to do with skill that was so that you know men were more skilled say at engineering and women were less skilled at it but what seems to have been what seems to be the case is that if you look at the basic predictors of success like intelligence and conscientiousness there's virtually no gender differences at all now so what that seems to mean is that the reason that there are occupational differences at least in egalitarian societies, is because the occupational differences are driven by choice, not by ability. Now, that's something to think about, you know, because again, that seems to indicate that if you're going to push hard against gender preferences, what you have to do, in some sense, is restrict the degree to which people's choices determine their occupational outcomes. And, you know, once again, it's not exactly clear that you'd like to live in a society that would do that. I mean, it, it, unless you think that precise equality across every dimension in terms of occupational, um, uh, what, the number of men and the number of women in each occupation is such an important index that it actually trumps what people as individuals actually want to do when you allow them free choice. So, so the big difference is, and it's one standard deviation, so... To be as interested in things as the typical man, the typical woman would have to be more interested in things than 85% of women. And to be more interested in people than things, to be more, as interested in people as the typical woman, a man would have to be more interested in people than 85% of men. Now that's starting to become a very large difference. Now there's other differences too. This is using the Holland categories. Holland is a very well-renowned industrial organizational psychologist and he divided jobs into these six categories realistic, investigative, artistic, social, enterprising and conventional and what you see is that men show stronger realistic and investigative interests the realistic category is particularly big, it's eight-tenths of a standard deviation and women show strong artistic, social and conventional interests and there was no sex, no gender difference at all in the degree to which people preferred enterprising occupations. So, here's from, the, from a different study from Psychological Bulletin, looking at, there's, there's, this, there's this phenomena that, that people are quite upset about, especially in the US, although it's also an issue in Germany, that women are underrepresented in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics dimensions. And so, but if you look at the interests of men and women, you see under men that men are 
1.1 standard deviation more likely to be interested in engineering and three, four tenths of a standard deviation to be more interested in math, science and three tenths of a standard deviation more interested in math now that has, again, that has nothing to do with ability so, you know, for, there, there is some evidence, although it's really highly disputed and, 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 the, and the evidence, I think, keeps going back and forth that men are better at spatial rotation and that seems to be linked to testosterone I like, but I, like I said, this, this idea has been attacked very heavily um, there's also some evidence that if you look at the intelligence distribution of men and women that the women's distribution is a little higher peaked and a little less wide and what that means is there's far more men who fall into the extremely intellectually um, impaired category and, and that sort of seems to go along with the fact that the, the vast proportion of, of children in school who are in trouble are boys but they're also overrepresented at the extreme upper end of the continuum so the male distribution is flattened and the people who believe that believe that, well, it's typical in animal communities, mammalian communities, for there to be more variability among the men so, because men are expendable fundamentally and so, in some sense, the species can take a bigger chance with variability even though the means remain the same now, that was what Larry Summers was referring to he was a president of Harvard when he suggested that there might be intellectual differences between men and women that in part accounted for the differences in, in STEM um, prevalence and he just got roasted for that, in fact I think they fired him which, which was really unfair I thought because he was just referring to a study he wasn't making a claim that that was his opinion but, but we can put that aside for the time being it doesn't look like you need to invoke an intellectual capacity explanation to account for the underrepresentation. You can just sh see that in the interests diverge. Now, you know, you could attribute that to stereotypes and so forth, but then you run, against, run up against the problem that the differences are bigger in the countries that have done the most to eradicate the stereotypes. So, I don't really see how that hypothesis can survive. As far as I'm concerned, it's just been proved wrong in the last ten years. The gender differences are not primarily cultural.